The best hand job tip is to use your mouth. The best blow job tip is to use your hands. What is an NSFW Pro tip that everyone should know? Thanks for coming to another Alien Radio story time. Viewers like you are what make this channel magical. Nah it's still the same ducked up channel, with the same host, Andrew. Since you're already this far in, hit the like and subscribe. If you don't I will tell your parents about all money you spent simping on e-girls. Anyways, let's get into the stories. The best advice I ever got from a drunk aunt at a wedding was do everything half as hard as you think you should. Use Bing instead of Google for porn. Annoyed with the crappy porn lore? Just turn the music off and listen to a random tennis match. Moaning and cheers are included. I learned this from another thread two weeks ago, and oh my god. Okay, fellow men. When you're masturbating and reaching climax, slow down and clench your butt cheeks. You will shoot like 20 feet and you have basically come into Valhalla. If you're considering a vasectomy and already have kids, ducking do it. I had mine almost 20 years ago and I haven't regretted it once. If you're in a relationship where you're safe from STDs, it's wonderful not having to worry about pregnancy. You get a lot more sex and it's a lot more fun. Do not overindulge in apple juice before an important date. Edit. Too much fruit juice causes diarrhea. That's because many juices contain sorbitol, a non-digestible form of sugar. Excess sorbitol levels cause the body to try to dilute the sugar by pulling water from the bloodstream into the intestine, which causes loose stools. If you're a dude and you have issues with cooming too quickly during sex, try relaxing your legs and hips. If you're a chick and you have issues with cooming too quickly during sex, PM me your number. Edit. Oh and do kegel exercises. On a date, or whenever you're together in general, spend the day to tease each other. Don't be overly obvious, but it goes a long way in building the fire between each other. Edit. A quote I heard somewhere goes a long way in explaining this. Foreplay starts as soon as your previous sexy time is over or somewhere along those lines. You're not done licking until she pushes you off. I've had girls who would try to push my head away when close to orgasm, and others who have grabbed onto my head with a death grip and almost suffocated me. The ones who push away, I will grab their legs or hands and power on, unless they really want me to stop you'll know, trust me. The ones who are trying to suffocate me, I'll make a fighting chance to grab one's last gulp of air before working that crap, do what you must. Push against her legs, backpedal with your feet, whatever just get that breath of air. But do not, I repeat, do not, remove her hands from your head, trust me. You don't need to lay your finger into her clit full force. More pressure does not equal more pleasure. And don't rub it like you're trying to get bird crap off your window. Be gentle for the love of God. That crap is sensitive as hell. When choking a partner, press on the sides of the neck, not the front. Pressure on the sides restricts blood flow to the brain, resulting in that fun dizzy feeling. Pressure on the front stresses the trachea and can damage it. Edit. As many have said, choking at all is dangerous. Don't use very much weight at all. Much of the time, a hand on the neck and the suggestion of pressure is all you need. Use a well-placed pillow. Especially for those with a chronic illness. Some people are surprised to hear that sick people have sex. I've been sick my whole life I'm an adult and I have sex. Granted probably less but pillows helps me have more. So I don't have to focus on my body and using energy to keep in a certain position, so I can relax easier. I use several. And it's definitely helped my sex life. I say this to anyone with a chronic illness who's opened and talking about sex we suffer enough. We shouldn't have to give up sex if we don't have to. A female orgasm doesn't work like the male. Don't speed up if she is coming. You're doing something right, don't stop doing exactly that. When you're giving a blowjob, look up at them. Guys seem to like it. Yeah, seriously guys. If she says don't stop, I'm going to coom, actually don't stop and continue doing exactly what you are doing. If a guy starts going harder, thinking that will help, or does something different, lots of us women will lose the orgasm totally and have to start all over. On the flip side, if you say that, it's a pretty good way to make a guy immediately coom. 
As a guy, having sex is often a test of endurance and performance, and less mindless fun. I kinda wish I could just let an orgasm happen whenever without it immediately making me lose. The girl that doesn't make you wear a condom is the girl with whom it is most important to wear a condom. I had a gas station job about 10 years ago, and one of my single mother co-workers, who was really cute, was laying it on me hard. A few weeks later I bit and ended up in her messy apartment. We were getting to the deed, and she kept emphasizing how I didn't need to use a condom, and even went as far as to pull it off of me. Note the f out of all that. The next day the other girls at work were giving me crappy looks because of whatever they were told. One of them got up in my face at one point and told me that the girl liked me so much, id cow, barely knew her, and that I was a jerk. Whatever, at least I don't have kids. Men. If you find a bump on your balls, move your ball sack around your testicles. If the bump moves around with the skin of your sack, chances are it's a swollen gland or a cyst. If the bump stays put on your testicles, see your doctor immediately. This could possibly be testicular cancer. Regardless, get yourself tested. Better to be safe than sorry. Edit. To make this NSFW, have your GF or BF check for you with their tongue. Also, if it doesn't move around your balls it could be a cyst. If it's near the top of the balls, it's very likely an epididymal cyst, but get it checked anyway. Testicular cancer feels like a bump originating from inside the testicle, and the ball will maybe feel hard or rough. If it's a surface lump it likely is a cyst, as cancer will feel like a swelling from inside the testicle changing its shape rather than a superficial bump. Edit, also remember the testicle has various appendages and bits hanging off of it. If in doubt, get it checked. It's likely nothing but don't risk it. Edit 2. Been answering loads of questions, and I'm happy to carry on if anyone's concerned or wants an opinion. The ultimate answer is though, if it's lumpy, bumpy, ache, sore, or causing you anxiety, pop to the doctors and remember to check your testicles regularly. P after sex. This goes for both genders. Nobody wants a UD. Yeah, but if you're a guy and you pee too soon after you coom, it's the worst. If that happens to me, my urethra gets really itchy, and I feel like I have to pee for like half an hour, even thought I really don't. Edit. Wow, so much empathy. I'm really happy for the guys who now know that they aren't alone and or now know that they don't have some strange shameful disease. I'm 55 and I can remember having this problem for as long as I've been having orgasms. For me anyway, it has nothing to do with whether and what I've been eating drinking before, or what kind of sex how much, etc etc. It's simply a matter of not waiting long enough between spooging and peeing. As long as I give it 10 or more minutes, I'm good but sooner than that, and it's torment. Edit 2. Consensus seems to be that you can avoid this by squeezing out as much semen as possible before you pee, and if it does happen, you can make it feel better by applying a warm cloth to the area or taking a hot bath. Sex Towel. For play before sex. Be vocal in what you like or don't. This helps for current and future sex with this person. Always use a condom the first time. Don't even listen to no, I'm on birth control. It's cool. Have some bottles of water nearby the sex. Sex is dehydrating. Clip nails so you don't hurt her. Don't wear rings when giving a hand job or blow job. That crap hurts. If you even think you're about to have sex, hit up the bathroom and wash the genitals. Consent. If you're sober and they're drunk. Stop. Even if they really want it, and you know it's past the point they can create new memories, just don't. Trust me, they'll thank you. I know this is a weird comment. Give her a massage before sex. It's like pre-foreplay. It gets them in the mood even more. Don't listen to guys who think they're tough. Always spoon and cuddle after sex, unless you both are exhausted and pass out. It's pretty awesome. You're both emotionally wide open, so the conversation is honest and genuine. This leads to better sex and intimacy in the future. Clean out your asshole before anal. Inside and out. Also putting condoms on sex toys makes cleanup way easier. This should be revised. A while before anal I'd suggest fasting laxatives, enemas, and roto-rooters shouldn't be used regularly, as it can upset the flora in your GI tract. 
Make sure you have pooped well before and clean your ass with soap and water, makes it nice for rimming too. Don't have anal if you're constipated or have had diarrhea in the last day or so. Wear a condom. Always. Uterus in men hurt a lot, and the rate of transmission for HIV is higher with anal rather than vaginal sex, especially if the giver cooms. I have a lot of anal sex regularly, and I've never had any issues or embarrassments with these methods. P.S. Put a towel on the bed just in case, and don't get too butt hurt if you have an accident. Thanks for watching. What did you think of the story time? Let me know in the comments below. If you liked the video smash that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any more story times.